It's been days since the White House race was called for Democrat Joe Biden, but Donald Trump has yet to concede or show any signs of acknowledging his defeat. Instead, he is making unproven allegations of widespread voter fraud, which he says tipped the race to Biden. The maths, however, are daunting, he trails by tens of thousands of votes in several states he would have to overturn in order to succeed. Most see it as a lost cause. Trump's position, in defiance of political norms and traditions, is sending tremors throughout the nation, as public officials and American voters react to a situation that, while telegraphed for months in advance, is still traveling uncharted terrain. Here's a look at how some key groups are handling these days of uncertainty. And how it might all play out. Republican leaders should Donald Trump concede? Not yet. The president has every right to look into allegations and request recounts under the law. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell The real story over the past four years, Republican politicians, from congressional leadership to most of the rank and file, have fine-tuned a strategy for responding to Trump at his most controversial. They bite their tongues, wait and let the storm pass. Their calculation is simple. Few Republicans want to draw the ire of a man who can unleash the wrath of his base with the flick of a Twitter finger. So despite the president's electoral defeat, Republicans appear content to stand aside and let the president insist he won with the legal votes, until the seemingly futile legal challenges are resolved and the results certified. Republican politicians have to think about their future, both in working with the incoming Democratic administration and in winning moderates in elections to come. Unlike the president, they're in no mood for scorched earth tactics. Their political timeline is measured in years, not days or weeks. So the name of the game is patience. They accept that the president has a right to make his claims, give him time to vent his frustration, but figure that there will be no evidence of sufficient magnitude to change the election results. Through their actions, if not their words, they're acknowledging that come January, there will be a new president. Trump, too, shall pass. Attorney General Bill Barr should Donald Trump concede? Unclear. While serious allegations should be handled with great care, specious, speculative, fanciful or far-fetched claims should not be a basis for initiating federal inquiries. Barr in a Justice Department memo The Real Story on Monday, in a departure from long-standing practice, Attorney General Bill Barr issued a memorandum to his senior staff opening the door for election fraud investigations at the Justice Department to begin immediately, rather than after vote results are certified by the states. The document gives Donald Trump confirmation that the government is looking into unproven claims of widespread electoral illegalities in multiple states he lost by tens of thousands of votes. The Attorney General, however, couches the memo with plenty conditions and cautions. Despite including plenty of caveats, Barr's memo will provide fodder to Trump and his supporters, who insist that the election was stolen from them, never mind that other Republican candidates had fairly successful results. There are safeguards in place to prevent political meddling in criminal investigations, particularly around elections. Barr has now removed some of those safeguards. Will it be enough to mollify the president looking for hard evidence to back up his claims of fraud? Trump's inner circle should Donald Trump concede? No, maybe. I just spoke with President Trump and told him I love him and am so proud of him for standing firm for the rule of law, the Constitution and our American system. Trump legal adviser Jenna Ellis, via Twitter Real Story publicly, the president's closest aides and associates, particularly those who have been with him the longest, like Rudy Giuliani, are rallying to his side as he continues to contest the 2020 election results. Part of this is practical. If the president leaves office, they lose their jobs, or, at least, access to the condits of power. For some, like Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, this has translated into a firm insistence that their side will prevail, this election is not over. Far from it. 